Hello, this is Professor Steve Potter. Today I'm going to show you how to automate these power supply modules by Rui Ding. This is the uh, DP50V5A module and this is the DPS515 module. They come with um, excellent manuals in English and Chinese, um, but they are not designed to be automated. So I figured out how to hack into them and allow them to be controlled by an Arduino. In my case, I use the Simbly uh, breakout board from SparkFun, but you could use any Arduino you want. This one's very handy because it has Bluetooth chip in it that allows you to do remote control. So not just automation, but remote automation. If you had another Arduino that had Wi-Fi connectivity, for example, you could do very remote control over the internet. Uh, however, um, my favorite Arduino is probably TNT 3.6. It's got about 60 GPIO lines. It's got an SD card, very fast processor, uh, but it doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, so you'd have to add that on as a separate um, shield of some sort if you're going to do that. So these uh, power control modules are very well designed. They have nice color LCD. They have this complex menu that you can click through and set all sorts of nice parameters such as over power protection, over current protection, over voltage protection. Um, but you have to know exactly where to click, so read the manual. All that clicking gets kind of tedious, so you can automate it with the Arduino and make it all go much faster than you could twiddle knobs and push buttons if you want to. So there's a speed advantage, there's a remote control advantage, and there, there's the ability to do complex functions. Uh, instead of just pushing numbers on here, you could have a mathematical equation that's adjusting the numbers according to some formula. For example, you could have a battery charger, lithium polymer, polymer battery charger, that's topping off as the voltage gets near its final voltage, it's reducing the current, and then when it gets to the final voltage, it shuts off the power supply. You could have it control LEDs, that's what I've got here, 200 watt LEDs that it's controlling. And uh, something that I should mention is that these knobs, these rotary encoders on here, are grounded every other click. And I've got LEDs here to indicate if one of the knobs is in a grounded state, the red LED comes on. And if that's the case, you cannot control it. The Arduino is not capable of controlling a grounded switch. So you have to make sure that the knobs are not grounded before you expect the Arduino to do any automatic control. So that's why I set this up here. Um, I've also got a um, real-time clock chip in here that remembers what time it is so I can have things come on and off at different times or for example while I'm asleep. How do you get this thing to talk to the Arduino? Well it's very easy for the um, the DPS515 because the main board that controls all the electronics uh, is separate from the front panel and it's connected by a cable. It's very easy to hack into. And I described that in great detail in an Instructable I wrote at Instructables.com. So search for Professor Potter and you will find it there. If you have this, um, if you have this smaller power supply module in which the electronics are all right there in the front panel, it's a little bit trickier because you have to solder wires onto each of the switches and the knob here, but it's doable. Once you have soldered the cables on, it's just a matter of sending the right commands from the Arduino into the device and it acts as if you have uh, push buttons on the front. So you're spoofing the button presses and the knob turning using signals from the Arduino. The DPS5015 has two cables, one for its keypad and one for the LCD. So you need to hack into the keypad cable completely. As you can see here, I've cut it in half and soldered a ribbon cable to each of its wires. And for the LCD cable, uh, you may or may not want to use the 3.3 volt line, which I think is number three on the wire, to power your Arduino. That's what I did. 
So I've got the 3.3 volts coming in over here, and then this uh, plug goes over into this female header over here. And as you can see, I've installed some resistors. These are important for limiting the current if your Arduino is commanding a high signal while somebody is pushing a button on the front panel. That would cause a direct short and that would burn something out. So you definitely want to include these resistors. I think I used about 5K for most of the pins. Uh, however, I also used 1K resistors for the um, rotary encoder. And this orange wire is connected without any resistors to sense what the state of the rotary encoder is, and that's a tricky issue that's described in my Instructable. Definitely worth looking at. If you have the smaller device, not the uh, DPS 5015, but something like this where all the electronics are in the keypad itself, then you have a little bit trickier of a job to solder all those wires directly onto the switches themselves like this. So here is a close-up view of the front panel and this is the down arrow switch, here's the set switch and you can see that I've soldered directly onto one of the wires coming out of the switch there. When you're doing that make sure you have a sharp soldering iron with a fine tip uh, make sure that the wire that you're about to solder on has already been tinned with some solder and of course watch out for the other little components that are nearby that you might ruin in the process of soldering it on and of course watch out for the LCD you can see I melted the plastic a little bit with the soldering iron um, if you're on the other side where the ribbon cable is for the LCD that could be uh, a big problem if you melted that so those kind of details can be found on my instructable um, so have a look at the Instructable. There's lots and lots of detail there. Uh, the, the chip that I used, the Arduino chip that I used here is the Simbly chip. Um, it's on a breakout board that's put together by SparkFun. I highly recommend it. This, um, this is a Bluetooth solution that works very easily and very well. The breakout board has some extra connections on it that the one you can get one from Simbly itself, distributed through Mouser and DigiKey and companies like that that's black colored, but this red one from SparkFun is better because it has uh, connections for the programming chip and for the programmer, um, the details of which one I used are in the Instructable. So I wrote an Arduino sketch that controls these um, devices and I'll show you an example of automating the changing of the brightness of the LCD. Here's the control panel for the LED lamp that I made with 200 watt LEDs. This one is the DP50V5A and this is the DPS5015. And in between is the Simbly, the Arduino and Bluetooth. There's a little Simbly chip there. Here is the real-time clock module. And these are some LEDs to indicate uh, whether or not the knobs are in their grounded state, which you can read about in the um, you can read about in the instructable. So if it's green, then they're okay, and that means that the Arduino can control them. So here we go. There's the Simbly app. It's called Four Mobile under the letter F, not S for Simbly, but F. And there is my sketch that it's running. And now the Simbly is loading the user interface into my phone. There it's already loaded. This is the home screen. And if I go to the info screen, you can see that there is a button for adjusting the LCD brightness. So they're already set to bright, so I'm going to turn them dim. And in about one second they're both dim. Now I'll set them bright. Boom. There you go. It takes me about half a minute to do by pushing buttons. And I'm going to try changing the LCD brightness by hand. Two set pushes, one down. Oh, first I have to push this. Another set, another set. Down, 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 down.
there. Let's do that again. Now we'll go back to bright. Set, set, down, 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 down. Push, right turn, five clicks. Set, 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 down, 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 down. Push, click, 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 click. Set, set. There you go. And I can also use the remote control screen here. It has all of the buttons and knobs that are on the front panel here. So I can control it, say, from my bed or the couch. And I can turn on an LED, adjust its brightness. Turn on the other one. Adjust its brightness, turn that one off. Okay. I can also spoof turning the knobs and pushing various buttons on here by pushing these here. And there's also a real-time clock. I can set what the current time is here on this screen. And this little chip here has a battery, backup battery, to remember what time it is. Turn on, turn off. But you could do anything. You know, your imagination is the limit. Anything that you need to control the power of in some tricky fashion or remotely or while you're away or while you're asleep, uh, you could do by writing your own sketch. The nice thing about the Simbly is that the user interface for a smartphone uh, app is all programmed in the Arduino IDE so that you don't need to learn Java, you don't need to write an app yourself. You basically create the app in the Arduino environment and then it loads it from the assembly chip into your phone each time you run the app. There is some caching, so that process goes a little faster the second time that you do it. Um, but it's very convenient and easy to get an app up and running. Wow. Simply connects instantly. Simply is very quick. A few milliseconds is all it takes to form a connection. So if you want to automate the control of large currents up to 15 amps, 50 volts DC. Um, read the manuals and uh, avail yourself of all the information about the assembly if you're going to use that particular Arduino. As I mentioned, if you're not doing remote control, there's no good reason to use the assembly. Uh, it's not a very powerful Arduino. The uh, TNT is much better. Um, and go to my Instructable at instructables.com to learn a lot of details about the hacking into the system and um, using the right resistors to control the uh, signal lines and whatnot. Don't forget to submit any comments uh, that you may have, suggestions for improvement, or requests for other tutorials that might go into more detail about how to do these sorts of things. Okay, see you later.